Hello and welcome to the Big Bank Theory Podcast. My name's John, I'm here with my friend and colleague Dan. Hello. Well, here we are. Here we are. Who could have foreseen such an event? I definitely didn't see that coming. No. No, well, no, I don't think we did. Although I feel stupid for not having seen it coming. <laughs> now it's actually come to pass. You are stupid. Um, listeners, if you don't know, where have you been? City were in the playoff final for League Two. They played Northampton Town. And they lost 4 0. Yeah. 4 0. 4 0. That's our biggest defeat of the season. Um, and it happened. On paper. At Wembley. Not just on paper, on the pitch as well. On paper, on grass, on t- skin, you know. Anything yep. you want it on. Cardboard. There was lots of cardboard there. Um, so that was that, listeners. Um, yeah, I think in the, we were quite um, upbeat, weren't we, in the in the last episode? We were upbeat. I'm, I'm listening back and thinking, well, are we a bit too? We might be a bit too giddy here. And uh, I hope <laughs> can blame us after like, you know coming, pulling it back around in that second leg of the second of the uh, semi final. But yeah, I think it was all right to be giddy. Max Dead had outdone himself. He'd lunged and split himself to glory. Yeah. Bowman had done the very unprecedented thing. Turns out even more unprecedented, as we see from the final, by putting that ball away so gracefully. And it felt like everything was going our way. It did a bit, didn't it? And yet... But we've been there before. Why didn't we know? Why didn't we think? We've had these glorious playoff matches before. And even I was positive about it. And I, you know, I feel like I should know better. I'm blaming you. Because, yeah, where were you to bring us down to earth? Uh, Anyway, if we didn't need you to bring us down to earth because Northampton did it, um, I'd imagine everyone listening saw it just the once. I can't bring myself to watch it again. Um, I've not done the highlights, no, I'm afraid. No, No. I'm sure we're all the same. But Northampton were 2-0 up within 20 minutes and we were absolutely bombarded. Um, Deservedly um, in the lead and all through the match dominated dominated didn't they yeah they were all over us and even it's not like they were making these precision passes although they were playing some good passes every ball that was 50 50 they made it look like 80 20 there was an intensity one there about the way they played which was you could just notice from the second the game started it was just like straight away they looked like so much more uh willing and quick and just uh, first at every ball and uh, we watched it together didn't we first time we've watched a football uh, exeter game together for a while and yep. you could just you could just see like um that it was like every single time we had the ball they had twice as many players as us you know that's what you know those games where, where it feels like that and then and when we've got it it feels and and when they've got the ball it looks like they've got so much space and there's where are all our players you know it's like it's bizarre, but that's yeah. the way it went down. It was like that, wasn't it? So that was the first half, and it was miserable. And they could have been five nil up, like they could have been. It was and strange, wasn't it? Yeah, but they were just Northampton were just doing their thing, you know. It was this was no, and this is a, you know everyone knows this, or but this was not a surprise to anyone. The way Northampton play isn't a secret. No, we were trained specifically for this. We've heard from. Matt Taylor and and whatnot since the game, and we knew they were going to play like that. Everyone knew they were going to play like that, um, and we could we could do nothing to stop it. And that's what was that was the most frustrating thing, wasn't it? I think it wasn't like we were surprised by them. No, I was surprised by City's lack of intensity. Yeah, I think yeah. you can set up wrong and get caught, or realize the plan you had isn't going to work because they're quicker that day. But what I was surprised at was that there was nothing to stop that, to shut that down. And so 2-0 just racked. You could see it come in and nothing had changed at halftime. It was merely that Max had made some good saves and Northampton had missed a couple that were close. No, it's just the same again, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. we were hoping for, you'd hope for kind of, um, okay, we, and we, we have seen this quite a lot of, of, of City this season where like, we've had bad first halves. Sometimes we've got away with it and gone in at nil nil, and we think, okay, and then we come out the second half and we are a lot better. And you kind of think, oh, maybe this, you know they've 
rearrange something. They've got the message across in a half time. They've we've started coming out. It came out exactly the same. It's exactly the same from the from the from the second half. I, I think maybe the slight difference in the second half was. Um, what our passes were stringing together a bit better. So I think first half, I don't think a th- single pass went anywhere. Sweeney was getting caught on the ball. Williams was getting caught on the ball. Taylor and Ghana. Everyone, if they even had the ball, they were getting caught. Yeah. Fisher, Bowman. Second half, I think our passing was hitting its target a bit more often for yeah. the first 15. It did start... I think that what, what I meant was that the intensi- Northampton's intensity from the second half whistle was exactly the same. It was, We yeah. did manage to sort of, yeah, impose ourselves ever so slightly after like in the second half like um but yeah it didn't last long no um of course then what happened was 15 20 minutes into second half uh Dean Moxie makes what can only be described as a crazy challenge yeah so uh, I mean I guess he's frustrated first thing happens is Jake Taylor gets sort of uh sort of uh, Elbow or I get an arm in the face, sort of. It's a bit of a kind of tussle. Uh, who knows? Taylor doesn't go down though, does he? He's, he's no, he goes down. Yeah. Oh, he does go yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, there's a bit of a kind of. Or does the ref? The ref doesn't blow for that no. though. It's sort of like still going on. And then Moxie comes like a sort of interview, doesn't he? Like you don't see him on the screen, and suddenly he just like you see him just like flying in from like into into shot and just like takes this guy out, which is just like. In crazy, cha- crazy challenge. Have you ever seen that meme that goes around of like a mum and dad throwing a baby in between two rocks, like rock climbing in Australia? No. Looked a bit like, it's worth seeing. Um, you never seen that? No, it's, it's madness. What it is madness. It's like baby. it's madness. It's a real a baby in a rock? No, no. They're, they're rock climbers. Right. They're in between rocks. You know, like Dartmoor style. They're up Hay Tor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And to get the small child from one side to the other, the dad lobs him. Right. Someone takes a photo of it, right? It's kind of famous internet photo. Well, then someone else catches him. Someone else. Yeah, and then everyone's gone mad with the captions. And right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, felt like Maisie went into the sky a bit like this baby. Like, yeah. And uh, obviously, obviously don't do that. Like, even if he'd got the ball, it would have been a yellow card. Um, Because it's from behind. It would have been the most spectacular tackle for it to be not a foul, wouldn't it, you know? No way, that was not going to be a foul. Like it's he, sort of like Maldini couldn't have done it, you know. You know, like sometimes you see tackles and you're like, he's coming in too fast, and then the player with the ball turns and it's too late. Yeah, that was not what was happening here. No, no, no. There I was mean, only one outcome. He, saw, I, I mean, who we can't speak for him, but it, it, it very much looked like he just saw red, didn't he? It? it was, yeah. frust- it was frustration because the other thing is we're in their half. We don't need to make... Moxie's basically coming back from the corner flag. He does not need to make that no. challenge in that area of the pitch ever, at any point. Do you know what I mean? So, and at that point, I mean, as if it wasn't already, in a way, he's he's let off the hook by the fact that we were so out of that game already that it sort of didn't matter. But he sealed it for us. That was the end of our day, wasn't it? And things just got worse from there, didn't they? But by that point, it was like it didn't really matter how many of they scored, did it? It was over. I think it was over. Like the optimist in me thinks, if we'd sn- snuck a goal, well, you never know. You never before, know. Before that, there's there is a yeah, there's a glimmer of hope. It didn't look like it, but there's a glimmer of hope. After that, forget it. And forget we've it. since heard from like quite detailed sort of stuff from Matt Taylor that he gave them this big speech yep. uh, when we saw them, didn't we? With all the cardboard cutouts after the second half, he gave them this big speech about how it was all about keeping your emotions in. In check, yep. and not you know reacting to because again we know how Northampton are going to play. They niggle at you, they get you like that, and they get you round, riled up. And then I've never seen such a sort of blatant example of someone <laughs> just doing the exact opposite, and someone who's like a senior pro, you know, one yeah. of the main uh, like experienced well, players, vice captain, experienced player. If anyone should know, it really should know better than that. You know, I don't want to kind of. He's. We'll come to this, but I mean, that's that's his last game for C. Yeah, and I think everyone knew that at the time anyway. But I'm probably suspected that to be the case. Probably, and he would have known. Um, turns out he didn't know. But come on, that's the way you want to go, is it? Hardly Zidane, is it? No, no, it's more. It's just like oh, everyone's just like that's the last impression. Oh, you idiot! You know, and and over. He's had a great career, really good career for one of our kind of 
academy graduates who's gone on played in the Premier League had a really great and then came back it's like it's almost like your dream career on FIFA isn't it you know yeah you start at your hometown club you end up back there if you end your career but then he does that he goes and does that I, I I feel sorry for him because I don't want to see anyone have that awful thing but I don't it's mad you do it's mad it was just madness wasn't it but yeah. so that was that and then of course Northampton went on I got two more 4-0, yeah. 4-0 at Wembley. Do you know what? I don't have, I have no recollection of those last two goals. Can't even think what happened. Scrambled. One was scrambled. I can't remember the other. I don't want to know. Yeah. And what struck me, amongst other things, was everyone looked out of their depth, I thought. I thought Taylor looked out of his Completely depth. Completely overawed by the occasion, for sure, as well. And the situation, I think. Um, I think Max did, was badly let down by his defence. And even he's just like... Yeah, he made a lot of good saves. He made a really it lot of good been, saves. It could have been but seven or eight. You think nil. about Peter Schmeichel, and in my mind, Max said, is this person, of, you just go mad, like grab someone by the collar, tell them it's awful, because you're making those saves for nothing at the minute. Atten Garner went missing. Jake yeah. Taylor, I, you know, I, I love well, Jake we Taylor. we seemed completely powerless to do anything about it. We, like, yeah. we knew what was happening, and we couldn't affect it. You yeah. know? And it's strange, because they're, they're, they're a team who have done worse than us this season in the same division against the same teams. Yeah. We've done better than them in all the same fixtures. And somehow we couldn't deal with them. And not only could we not sort of not deal with it, we've completely, like, we had no no chance against them. The way they played, we just had no reply to it. No. That's, the centre-backs. That, that guy, I, f- I forget his name now, he had a really good game. You know, He kept winning every single header. Yeah, the big guy. Yeah, but... We've got defenders who, that's our centre backs. That's supposedly what they do. Yeah, that's why they were brought in. Aaron Martin, a tall bloke. All these guys were brought in, not Sweeney so much, but like, were brought in to, have, to like have these imposing kind of tall guys. You know, like we, that's a massive team. But like City players, like you're bigger Fisher. than like your, your, the, the well, Tisdale team we had before that. Absolutely, we think you're Fisher. You got Bowman. You got Attengana. You've got like I know Sweeney's not big, but the other two centre backs. Max Ted's a big goalkeeper you think this should have been enough like I'm not saying mistakes don't happen um, and we all know like a good piece of play or a lucky bounce or you're looking the wrong way you know those things happen for a goal but at that point it, it wasn't that they scored four goals because four goals can happen from four good bits of play it was that we made no clear signs that we could do anything about it no despite knowing exactly what was happening to us it's a bit like you know when um, Robin, Iron Robin, is playing against uh, sort of like a lesser defence, and he keeps cutting in on his onto his left foot and shooting and scoring. Yeah, and it's like he's so good, there's nothing they can do about it. Yeah, they know he's doing it. Yeah. He's on playing on the right wing. You know he's left footed. It's very famous. He's going to cut in. He's going to curl one into the far post, and there's nothing you can do about it. It was like that was happening, but that happens when he's so good that the other team got... This is asking to Northampton. They finished lower than us in the division. Yeah. Well, we, in theory, we've got better crosses of the ball. Like There's statistics about Williams, about Sweeney. Um, we know that Taylor can play a good ball. We know that Nicky Law can unlock defences with passing. Nothing. Bowman and Fisher... It... We've got to be careful here because we've bigged this up. In the previous episode. I know, I don't... But we did point out that, uh, like, every other time it had been tried this season, it looked bad, I mean, We did say that at the time, and, you know... I just don't understand. You don't understand. believe us, listen back to the old... old ones, it's it? John Aldridge, isn't it, that said, the way to score goals is stand where no one is. Yeah, right? go where the defender isn't. Go where the defender isn't. Well, Bowman and Fisher were both not only going where the defender was, but they were both going to where the same defender was. And they were going to the same place that each other was. Yeah. There was a pointless, them two being there. It was like having, it was like, they might as well have been one player and they might, that one player was rubbish, you know? Yeah. <laughs> rather, than having, rather than having two good players or two bad players, it was just one. People were crying out for a Jose, space. weren't they? And I don't imagine he would have done anything better. Not because he's not a better player. Maybe he is. I don't think we've ever seen the best of him at City. But I think he's just not available for training and whatever yeah who knows who i mean knows? He, he was on the bench so i don't know what the deal is with that so he must have been he can't have been no it's like his, ne- his legs not falling off is it you know? his head's not, no no he's alive but the, the interesting for that yeah like 
if you're going to play Fisher and Bowman like that, and they're going to play like that, you might as well put the Jose on. Yeah. It's not, you're already losing. It's better than nothing. And what you've got at the moment is, you might as well, is the equivalent of one player. I would have doing thought. doing the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. I would have thought it would have been obvious to Jay or a Jose at that point. A Jose has got a lot of stick on the, the internet this season and on the big bank from standing there and and whatnot. Um, and Ryan Bowman also has got a fair bit of stick. Now, both of those players probably deserve a fair amount of, of of that. They're not hardly set the league alight, have they? Do you know what I mean? But if you look at the stats, they both... In terms of goals per game, a Jose, Nicky Jose and Ryan Bowman have the same goals per game ratio. Right. They're both 0.31 or something. So you can't criticise Nicky Jose and not Ryan Bowman. And by, by the way... He's either been not picked or not fit to play. And that's an issue, obviously, yeah. for Jose. But he scored the same amount as Bowman on paper. You know, like... Yeah. So. I, I, don't blame, I don't blame Matt Taylor for not for putting Fisher and Bowman in. I think we all thought that made sense, especially after the semi-final. Well, yeah, we did, I don't think we did, but we kind of thought, oh, well, it worked there. It worked there. And also, we were, like he said, we were looking at, we know what Northampton are about. Unfortunately, we did know that. So we were looking at, yeah, it makes sense. Let's put as many big guys on as we can. But is it not a bit frustrating that we didn't, that we seem to have tried to kind of play them at their own game, whereas we could, there was an option to maybe just try and beat them up with our style of play. Yeah, and we're not different. that we're not that big bruising team. Yeah, we might have some height. Alex Fisher's a tall guy. He's not a big bruising centre forward, is he? No. And Ryan Bowman, as much as he's kind of got the reputation of being this kind of like bruising, he's not very good at doing it. He gives away a lot of free kicks. He's not particularly strong from the looks of things. Yeah, like, you compare him to the Northampton yeah, uh, exactly. fellow scored, yeah. I want. I. I. I he's thought not good at even winning. He's not even good at winning free kicks, and let's not even get started on his timing, on his of his jumping, because it's horrendous. It's interesting that the first two minutes or something, Williams went on a run or had the ball in their half before any, anything. Yeah, happened. yeah, yeah. And Northampton gave away a yellow card. Yeah, one of their centre backs. One of yeah. their centre backs, and of course that's all completely forgotten now, and rightly so. But you're absolutely right to say we've got something that they they can't cope with in the same way that they've got something we can't cope with. And you're right that when Taylor kind of, and he said as much, didn't he, matched it up to try and do what they were doing. Yeah, he said, I put in my strongest team, or whatever it was, that was. Yeah. Apart from, he said, Tom Parks, he wasn't, he wasn't quite, um, hadn't trained enough because he's one of the ones who had coronavirus. That's right, yeah. Um, I just think it, 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 the whole thing reeks of missed opportunity. Yeah. Because again, we hate, we hate Wembley. <laughs> again. Again. Yeah. So that's that's three in a row. There've been no valiant defeats. They've been like literally we've staggered throughout a thing that we've ultimately been yeah killed in. Yeah, I mean the first one would I would say would be that is the one the Blackpool one was the one where it's like the, Joy Brown injury on it and all yeah, that. Yeah, stuff. there's a bit of bad luck in that one. A, a base, you can't put it. I wouldn't put it all down to like kind of we approached it wrong. Whereas the other two, I'd put it down to we probably approached approached those wrong. Like there's an element of gambling and you know like and estimated guesses in football management. I suppose you know you don't know what you're going to come up against, uh, but you can have a pretty good idea, can't you? You know, and that's Keith Curls. That's the way he does it. Indeed, it's no surprise, and it's, he's never been promoted before. No. You know? Yeah. Now he's had a long career. Matt Taylor's only just started. So, you know, I'm not criticising him for knowing less than Keith Curl, but we we did know what they were going to do, didn't they? It's just like, I don't know. I think everyone ultimately didn't do their best for a number of reasons. So I don't think Matt Taylor did his best. Um, by the way, I'm not saying any of this was on purpose, but none of them did as well as they could have. The manager didn't do as well as he could have. Maybe the only person that came out of it with any kind of dignity was Maxted, who, by the way, his kicking was still bad on his left foot, which I don't blame him for. How are they, how are they still passing it back to his left foot? I mean, yeah, who would expect a League Two goalkeeper to be a good with his left foot? Like, it's too much to ask. He wouldn't be a League Two goalkeeper if he could kick with both feet and be a great shot stopper and a brilliant distributor. It wouldn't be there, would it? You know, no. like, so yeah, stop giving him the ball back on your left and stop getting into positions where you need to do that. Right. You've already made the error and you're basically just passing on the error to Johnny Max and going, well, if you can't kick on your left foot, at least it won't look like it's my fault. 
Indeed. So I think Aaron Max Martin, Dead, you're guilty of that. Max Dead, yeah, he was. Max Dead mate came out of it not undignified, but nobody else. Yeah, and that says a lot when you you lose four 0 and your keeper's still your man well, of the match. That's what happens at primary school, isn't it? I mean, that's that's literally a primary school scenario where the keeper's made ten saves. Yeah, of course he's got more to do because the team have played so but badly. But I mean, that's just that's just the indicator of how bad everyone else was. Yeah. You're absolutely right. So that was that four 0 League Two for another year. Yeah, trudged back. Now it's it's mad circumstances, isn't it? We don't even know when the next season's going to start. But, you know who's going to be there? How how any of it's going to work? But that's the one thing that hasn't that we do know for sure is that we lost the playoff final and we're going to be in League Two again next year. Okay, well, we'll talk about that more in a second. So, yeah, to, uh, the season 2021 in League Two, Exeter City will be there. I'll be there. Dan, will you be there? Yeah, I've got to yeah, go. Mm-hmm. We'd imagine we'll all be there. I'd imagine you'll all be there, listeners. No, I can't wait. You know, I mean, whatever. I say this all the time. I'd love to be in League One, but ultimately I don't really care. As long so as I can go and watch City. We're in League Two. Um, the league's a bit different, of course, as every year. We've lost uh, all the teams that got promoted. Um, and we've hey, gained... What? Hey, what? Yeah, that's what happens. I don't even want to mention them because... Dirty no, swines, no, dirty please, dogs. Um, but we've gained, welcome aboard to Southend and Tranmere and Bolton Wanderers. Bolton Wanderers, that's a big one. Yeah, been a while since we've played them, isn't it? They've been a very long time, hasn't it? Well, I don't remember the last time that was. But. No. Um, of course, there's quite a lot of connections between old City players and Bolton players from the past. Um, so that'll be interesting. I'd like to. Dean Moxie. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I'd, um, I'd like to go up to the Reebok. Um, whatever yeah. it's called now. Well, this the other thing. I don't know if we talked about it in the last episode or not, but everywhere's miles away. Everywhere's miles away. And if we've away. managed to get promoted, everywhere's close. So we've still got Forest Green. Yeah. And we've still got Newport. We've still got Leighton Orient. That's still at Leighton Orient. still a long way, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. The I mean, closest that's... game is a different country. That's what everyone's saying now, isn't it? Man. Um, and then, of course, yeah, Tranmere is not close. South End's not close. Barrow really isn't close. So Barrow are coming up from the conference as well. And uh, Bolton's not very close either. So that's what we're up to. Um, there'll be one other team joining Barrow. Don't know yet. Apparently, so far, the National League are going to go for playoffs. If I was a betting man, Dan, I'd say Notts County are the likely ones, mainly because they've got the money to do it. Yeah. Everyone else is... Like, their squad's completely threadbare. They've Them again. Go. Yeah, so I expect it'll be, I expect it'll be Notts County. Yeah. But who knows? Barrow's a new one for me. I can't ever remember City playing Barrow. Do they play in the when we're in the sort of conference years or anything? Mm, or, who maybe. knows? There's a lot of weird. There's a lot of teams like that, wasn't it? Sorry, Barrow. I'm, not that any of you are listening, but I am lumping you in with all those kind of, you know, football teams that sound like what is that a village? I don't know. Like it's a town, isn't it? It's on right on the peninsula in Cumbria. If I was because Barrow went bust, didn't they? And they'd come back. And you know when teams normally come back, they have to rename themselves. I was trying to think of some. No, don't worry. Don't worry, because I've got Too it. Too bad. Yeah, yeah, go on. Um, well, you know, like you've got in Madrid, you've got Atletico, and then you've got Real, Real, yeah. Yeah. Real. Surely you'd want to be Real Barrow, wouldn't you? <laughs> Surely. Uh, There's a missed opportunity there. Um, so, yeah, so Barrow. <laughs> it's, that's okay. Oh, sorry. I was thinking on the spot here. Um, <laughs> As if. <laughs> I can so, see you consulting your notes on that. <laughs> Indeed. Um, so that's the league. Um, what's more interesting for us, probably, as City fans, is the squad. Who the hell is going to play for Exeter City? <laughs> Who have you got? Peter Fox is back in goal. Disgraced goalkeeper Peter Fox is back in goal. Um, I don't know if he is disgraced, actually. I should probably scratch that from the record. No, I'm pretty sure he's disgraced. Okay. Um, and uh, no, so we've still got two goalkeepers. That's a good start because we didn't have any goalkeepers last year. That's true. Do you remember that last this time last year we were in Jersey playing a friendly? With no goalies. With no goalies. I tell you, we did... Uh, so, luckily for us, we've... The retained list, um, you know, the... Um, who's going and who's staying. Yeah. 
every season that's what everyone's always talking about oh, when are you going to get the retained list and um, obviously we had to wait a bit this year other teams have already put theirs out but it's, it's arrived today isn't it just before you recorded yeah handily thankfully um, so we now know and it's all those eight players or whatever that were out of contract every single one of them is being released uh, we all sort of knew this because some of us will have seen this um, uh, article um, that came out yesterday on a subscription uh, football website now yeah. I'm sure you would have seen most of you would have seen it already um, if not uh, if you can find me on, if you can find me on Twitter I'll send it to you. Oh, that's very kind. Can we do that as the Big Bank Pod? Maybe we don't. No, want to... yes, we don't want to get in trouble, do we? We know we're quite looking for a job with the Athletic, so uh, yeah. When they want an extra, we didn't. City I, podcast... I deliberately didn't mention the name. <laughs> You've done it now, so. Oh, sorry. Damn, they're going to hear it, and we won't get that job. Um, you can anyway. Uh... So yeah, so <laughs> oh, is that what you were doing? Not mentioning them, so um... uh, yeah, because I really was really expecting that. That email any day now. True. Um, um, so it's yeah. So on the Athletic, they already announced that Aaron Martin. Has been let go. Yeah, but within that, they said all the players that were out of contract weren't staying, didn't they? So we we also knew who that meant by process of elimination. We knew that. Who so that was, the list I mean. is. Um, the list is. It's quite sad. I feel quite sad about some of these people. Well, it's Lee Holmes is the the sad one, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. Well, one of the sad ones. So he's not retiring. I don't think he's looking for another club. It doesn't say that he's retiring, does it? Yeah. So he, his Instagram still says that he's a professional footballer. Oh. He just deleted the Exit City bit. Right, okay. So it's him. Yeah. It's Jared Dick um not Jared Dickinson. Um Brennan Dickinson. Yeah. Craig Woodman. Yeah. That's sad, a sad, sad one. Lee yep. Martin. Yeah. Dean Moxie. Mm-hmm. Gary Warren. Gary Warren. Um Aaron Martin, what yep. he said. Jaden Richardson returns to Nottingham Forest and Jared Thompson, who we don't know who this is, do we? Well, well he's the goalkeeper, he's isn't the goalkeeper, he? That we never saw. The one with the six pack <laughs> and the pants. Yeah, the uh, the ripped goalkeeper, um, who I never saw a photo of, not once. No, me neither. So um, that's the list. So, I mean, they're just doing this because they have to, of course. Like, we don't know when the season's going to start. Yeah. So th- that would, this might this might well have been different, and if 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 um there was no such thing as COVID nineteen, yeah, if only. Um, this might have been a bit different, mightn't might, it? You know, some of yeah. these players might have been signing new deals with the club. We don't know. We can only no, I think obviously the sad ones are the established ones, Woodman and Holmes and Moxie. They all probably would have gone anyway, wouldn't they? You have to imagine. Yeah. Woodman. Holmes has hardly played because of his injuries. Yeah. And they're all, you know. Getting on. Yeah. And the same with Gary Warren. You know, they're all kind of like towards the end of their careers, if not at it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's especially sad to see um, them going. It Woodman and um, Holmes and Moxie. Yep, it is. Um, Lee Holmes was a, a great player for us, wasn't he? Yeah. Like I know we underachieved at times and missed out here and there, and were, were disappointing. Had disappointing seasons, but he's a great. He was just so good, wasn't he? When he was on it, yeah, he was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, he, it's a shame that he's had so many injuries and stuff. Really but. is. Moxie also obviously has been great both eras. Yeah, um, like we, we talked about him earlier. I mean, it's a, it's a shame how it how it ended, but yeah, of course, you know, we can't take away all the great years he's he's had with City and elsewhere. Uh, and Woodman, of course, never celebrated once in his life, so that's good as well. I'm definitely going to miss Craig Woodman. Um, then there's, I mean, we hardly saw anything of Gary Warren, did we? And not really. No, played a couple of. <laughs> um, under 21 games yeah and then Brennan Dickinson I think could have been good but obviously he's yeah I think under the circumstances first one in last one, last one in first one out yeah uh, and then Lee Martin had moments of usefulness but he was never the, I, I, I never really you'd think a, a player in their 30s would know and maybe he does know but never seemed to me it was very clear what kind of player or position he was no and who I, I, yeah me neither um I always quite yeah. You, you, when you see him do good things, you think, oh, that lo- looks like that. He's a he's a decent player, and like, but then it never, you never found that consistency, did he? With either with kind of injuries or with just like a run in the side, or you know. So that's right. Another one gone, but the, I suppose the big one is Aaron Martin, isn't it? I think so. That's the contentious issue. I mean, he started the Wembley game. Yeah, I man really of the match in the well. in the semi final. Scored a great too. goal. Yeah. Has been 
throughout this season, very consistent and appeared a lot. Yeah. Well, it was he's been weird, wasn't it? He's been the main man. All the other, the other two have changed. have changed a lot. Yeah, well, I suppose Sweeney's been mostly there. and they, But he's been the kind of uh, the mainstay of that back three, hasn't he? You know? Yeah, absolutely. So I feel that's a big shame. I mean, we don't know, of course, what will happen. I, I mean, I've got no idea. Some clubs, some amateur clubs are training already for next season. Some professional clubs, obviously, um, will have started training, the ones that can afford to pay their players for next season. So I'd imagine that the top le- top end of League One, the ones who um, haven't got into playoffs and also haven't got promoted but should have done, yeah, they'll presumably they'll be training again soon. They'll know when they are. But no one actually knows when this season's going to start. No. Yeah, totally. There's talk of like mid-end of September. Have you heard that? Yeah. But you know, at the minute, like Leicester's gone into lockdown. It's not like... Oh, this thing's just now petering out, is it? Like, absolutely not. Unfortunately, not. I mean, we all hope for, and maybe it still uh, will, but we will have to wait and see, I suppose, won't we? And to see, like, follow it. It's a big, much bigger issue than to do with football, isn't it? And it'll it be is. that that stops it being, you know. But let's say, let's say that football's back on again. Like they know that we're aiming for the end of September, last weekend of September. Let's say. So then you'd want your players training six weeks before that. Well, that's the middle of August. So that's only six weeks away. Yeah. So it might be that Aaron Martin uh, doesn't have a club by then and or doesn't have a better offer and comes back and Taylor rings him up. You know, I, I don't know if this is necessarily the end of the line. Yeah, maybe not. We don't know, do we? I mean, it, it, the, the kind of... It's sort of been sort of... Has it been said that it's... It's all for financial reasons and because of the coronavirus, we yeah. can't keep any of these players. And I understand that. But are we not going to buy it? Are we not, does that mean we're not signing anyone? I guess it means we're not signing anyone at this point. At the moment, right. Because okay. at the moment, if you sign someone, you pay their signing on fee, you pay their agent fee. So there's a possibility, who knows, maybe. But you do get the impression maybe after that playoff final, which is like, you know, he's c- as culpable as anyone. And what he's there for was one of the main areas yeah. in which and everyone was bad. And everyone you know, like, contributed to that loss, but the game was lost literally by us losing headers in our own penalty area. Yeah. And that's what Aaron Martin's there to do. And let's forget the season before, we'd almost forgotten who he was, Aaron Martin, because we were like, what's happened to him? Do you yeah. remember he could sort of get injured, he couldn't get him back in the team? It looked like Taylor wasn't having him at all. And there was times when he'd play people that there, I can't remember who it was now, but the players would sort of play centre back over him, and you'd think, who weren't even centre backs? You're yeah. like, how come Aaron Martin can't get it? And, and it starts. Remember hearing we were hearing a couple of rumours from people that we people that you vaguely know. Obviously, it turned out to be wrong that he was going to go to Torquay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very strange. So you're right. He's obviously not top of the list. So we probably probably won't see any of those list that, those players again. No. Yeah, I'd be surprised if we. Obviously, a lot of them we definitely won't. But yeah. Um. So who's left then? Well, of course, Max Dead and Ward. Yep. Um. And. There's nothing to say about that, really. But Max Dead made lots of good saves, but isn't isn't the distributor that Ward is? It's a shame we can't combine them together into <laughs> one. I think before he got injured, Ward was definitely hybrid first man. Pick. Ward was excellent between August and October, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, so maybe there'll be chance for that recovery. And then at the back, Sweeney, uh, but uh, sorry, Sweeney and Parks. But then we're kind of looking at some gaps there, aren't we? So that you'll have to bring some people in there. Yeah. Uh, you've got Atangana. It depends how much we're looking at, we're, we're looking at kind of relying on the young players for next season. Mm-hmm. Don't and I think, to be honest, some of them have shown this season in the leasing and stuff that they're probably, that we're worthy of a chance. And yeah. considering the circumstances where everything's going to be a bit, the you know, the purse strings going to be a bit tighter and it'll be the same for everybody. This might be the season where you kind of think, you know, a bit like, you know, when Chelsea had their transfer embargo, you kind of got to do it. Yeah. yeah and you yeah. kind of make, okay, maybe this is the season where we go like, right, okay, like, Dyer's playing now. He's just in, he's a first-teamer, you yeah, know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd like know. to see Joel Randall as well. I think he'd be excellent. Yeah. And, yeah, and there's, there's people in there, aren't there? Kite, yeah. I think, is another one. There's, yeah. There's, so maybe, maybe they're the answer. And maybe if it's not, it doesn't work out straight away, like, you know... I mean, maybe I think we, we can just assume to... the transfer window will be very different this year. Yeah, so, so it might have to be at a different time. Might for a be start, a transfer window throughout 
There's some talk of that. But then we've got the other side of things, whereas are we going to get, like, there's already speculation about it, if you'd seen any on online about Williams and, you know, perhaps being a target for... Yeah. So our midfield, you've got Atangana, Jake Taylor, um, Nicky Law. And Archie Collins. Archie Collins. That's decent. Jack Sparks is back as well, of course. That's another area. That, that's that's why you kind of think you're not so worried about Dickinson no. not being around. You no. got Sparks back. I mean, he was very specifically brought in as a replacement, wasn't he? For Sparks, Sparks is quality, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm, if anything, I'm worried that he'd be that someone's going to buy him. Yeah, but I think we'll get at least another year out of him. But so I'm, I'm optimistic. That's a good. That, I'm pleased about that, and I'm thinking that's great. I, I, I kind of think of that side being if he's going to be taken on that position, that left wing back, if that's the system we carry and play, and then great that he, that he can have that. That can be his his role, you know. And I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm pleased with that um but i think the real but if we can well so williams has got a year left on his contract yeah. after this yeah if we, if we don't sell him this summer then we get no we get no money for him so is that's the conundrum well, it's january it, isn't there as well i suppose right yeah but the, i guess that i'm including that in the mm. in this year so either we keep him and hope that he can help us do well next season or we cash in we won't have any option, really. If someone comes in with the money, we, he'll go, won't he? So I'd cash in. I honestly would. Yeah, I think I would too. As much as I think he's really good and he's, he's won us a lot of points this season and he's a part of the reason we're even anywhere near those playoffs. Mm. Given the, under the circumstances, and we've had to, like, you know, we haven't been able to afford to keep anyone who's out of a contract yeah. and it looks like maybe we are rel- have to be relying on the youth team. But we, we need money, don't we? To keep Collins and Sparks, I'd think that Williams would be, you know, to, to get a couple of million for him. Is oh. that likely? I mean, I've literally no Well, we idea. only get 50%, don't we? Okay. Because of the situation. Okay. I think that's what it is. Because so, of the kind of why we got him in the first place kind of thing. Right. So we get 50% of that. So, yeah, you'd want to get as close to 2 million as you... But is that realistic? I, I guess so. I mean, who knows? Everything's out of the window now anyway, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, no I one's mean, got any money. That's the other thing. He'd so. be better. Presumably, he'd be better in a different kind of league. Like, League 2 doesn't always lend itself to him so the higher up he goes the more he's worth if if you know what I mean yeah yeah true we're probably not going to sell him to another League 2 club because he wouldn't be any more effective no someone wants him who can really use him as in a unique way don't they you move up to League 1 of course you've got Northampton in League 1 now <laughs> is he any good there either I guess, you know you, there was some, obviously like Stockley he was him and Stockley were an excellent combination if you find another striker like Stockley that he could play with yeah. Then you've got something you can really... Someone who it looks like Williams might actually want to cross the ball to, you mean? Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Which leads us on to our kind of final position, um, or final f- part of the field, which is the st- up front. Now, there's been no word on Kriseni. Oh, yeah, I forgot all about him. No word at all. He's been playing in the park, if, if his Instagram's to be believed. Good on him. Yeah, good on him. Um, not Megan, his mates. Um Obviously, times are really different now. So we might get a season out of him. Maybe, yeah. We might get a season out of him. Then there's Ben Seymour, who's played a bit. Yeah. Came on in the uh, semis. Showed some promise, hasn't he? I mean, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not quite with all the people that are saying he should be starting every game, even though I've sort of just implied that's what should be happening at the defence. Well, Alex Hartridge as well for centre-back, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hartridge is the good one. <clears throat> um, but... Um, yeah, he looked good, hasn't he? And he's and he and he's had some experience now. He's played a lot, like a handful of first team games. He's got quite a few appearances as a sub. I think Taylor's done. Matt Taylor's done well bringing him in, like slowly, like that. And we've had the opportunity to. So that's a good one. Yeah, he's in there. We've still got a Jose. Don't forget as well. Well, we've got a Jose. So we've still got Fisher and Bowman, and a Jose and Matt J. And Matt J. And yeah, Chris Henney, if he stays. And Seymour, yeah. Yeah. Seymour, yeah. So we've got a lot of options up there, haven't we? Yeah, but if Bowman and if Bowman's our go to person, yeah. which he has been all season. He's gonna continue to be on I mean I mean I'm not happy about this, but he's gonna be. So But so, I've never been the biggest fan of Bowman, you know, like I've no. had to, and I, I I know at times that you kinda of go back and forward and I have to kinda of go like okay, yeah. I mean fifteen he, goals isn't to be sniffed at. Yeah, I'm sure. But when he's not effective, he's very ineffective. I mean when Let's just go cast the minds back to he threw on goal. At Wembley. At Wembley. Yeah. What's the score at this point? 1-0 down. I think it's 1-0. He threw on goal. I mean, he's really threw on goal in a very similar way than the way he was against Colchester. Yeah. He takes a terrible touch and you and then you start worrying. And then he, he does something which I've... 
well, he is, doesn't know what to the do. The most kind of, bizarre thing I've ever seen. He kicks it against his own foot, doesn't he? He sort of tackles himself yeah. in the most effective way. <laughs> like, you'd be... If only our defence could tackle other people like the way Ryan Bowman can tackle himself, yeah. we probably would have had more It was chance. diabolical. It was ridiculous. I don't... I mean, I don't... You know... So he's not going to... You know, like... And, and so there's going to have to be some thought around that because I, do, I feel like since... I don't even know what the change was, but since Christmas, January, we've just looked like, you know, we haven't really got many ideas up front. We've, yeah, and that's, that's as, as much as 15 goals as it is a decent return for a striker, we have had problems converting chances and scoring goals all season. Even back when we were winning a lot and we were top of the league, etc., we still were like unconvincing you know, unconvincing in the goal scoring department. And we've been say, saying this all season. Yeah, yeah. So something's going to... No, no, Seymour or Chris Enney or... Yeah, of course. There's loads be... of factors. It's like, again, with jo- uh, Jose, Jose being out of... Form, the, yeah. Been out of... Injured most of the season. And then he was supposed to be our kind of like marquee signing. And then you've got Bowman who's like kind of one type of player playing with... Like, in, a, in an ideal world, that would have worked well as a partnership, wouldn't it? And it's yeah. sort of... I don't know if it ever really did. We kind of saw glimpses. We saw them both do well separately in certain, at uh, different times. But I don't think we saw much of them as, as much of a partnership. But No, indeed. So there's going to need to be some rethinking around that, definitely. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, I mean, you touched on the uh, article from The Athle- Athletic. And there were some kind of interesting insights, weren't there, into... Exeter City in the in the Corona times, but also in general. So they're obviously quite about team building, aren't they? So fish and chips and swimming on the beach and yeah, I like that, and I think that's that's uh, important, and that's what players always say, isn't it, when they have been here? Yeah, and maybe they say about oh, I'm, only, I'm only I'm only looking at cities, so and maybe other, a lot of maybe it's quite common, but I don't know. It's definitely the case that people are happy when they're here and they enjoy it and you have to have that because you're asking people to come a long way away from where they live a lot of the time to come and play here um and it makes everything a hassle doesn't it away games are a hassle and you've got to go a long long way for every game you play and stuff and um but yeah i think that's um that's that's a good thing for the that taylor carried on isn't he because it was the same under tisdale but he's carried it on yeah 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 um, listeners, if you haven't read it, I'd recommend looking at that athletic article. It really is interesting. There's also a really interesting Sky Sports interview with Tisdale um, that also kind of talks about how we're in this, how we've got this kind of club at the minute. Um, he talks a lot about transfer targets and knowing where we exist. You know, so knowing that we're at the end of the motorway and you might as well cross those people off the list because they're never coming here kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and using our strengths. And I think our strengths are actually... actually Obviously, Devon's a really nice place to live and a nice place to be. There's a really good community spirit, both in the county and in the football club that carries over. So you get the kind of players, and I think Jake Taylor's the epitome of this, who buy into that stuff. Now, you get other players who... Well, Lee Holmes was another one who really did as well. Absolutely, you know, yeah, like, absolutely. And he said that in his in his farewell note, didn't he? Like, yeah, and he's quite, he, he said that a lot of the time that he was here, but how much he loved living in Exeter and stuff, so... It's, yeah, it's definitely some for some players. It's exactly what they're looking for, probably. So you just yeah. got to find them. And yeah, yeah, we'll see. So that's the potential squad for next year. I think you're right about Williams. Um, I hope that we'll carry on with the rest of them. Chris Henny, who knows? No idea. Yeah, I've forgotten all about him to be honest. But I mean, you know. similarly, he won't sign. Well, no, they have. Although having said that, they have taken on on professional terms three youth team players, haven't they? Right. So they're obviously not halted that progress. No, I suppose, yeah. I mean, I guess it's cheaper, there. obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm sure the offer would be there for him still. It's whether he wants to do it or whether he wants to wait for Munich or Villa or whatever. Yeah, we'll see with that one with him, won't we? Um, it, he, I mean, I think circumstances might help us on this occasion. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, if your mum's literally like, he's only 16, right? And, yeah. and your mum's getting ready to send you off to Germany. That's hard at the best of times. And then like, no, there's a global pandemic on. Sure, yeah. Even your mum's like, well, maybe you should stay another year. Yeah, but then when you, but then it, when it's actually, oh, actually it's um, it's Villa, and they're offering him like, what's going to work out as basically a million pounds a year. Yeah. You're hardly going to, you're gonna be like, if it was my son, I'd be, you know, pack your bags, get out now. 
Father of the Year. Go and Herod get me Herod. my money. <laughs> I made you. I deserve a bungalow. That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah all right. I want a sunbed. Yeah, like Gaza's sister. Yeah, that's what Gaza got his yeah, sister, good, isn't it? Yeah, good reference. Um, so, well, that's that. Um, if your son could get you anything, what would it be? Um, ooh. World peace? No, I was about to say, don't go for something like... <laughs> uh, if you could get me anything... A physical thing. PlayStation 5, thanks very much. That's it. That's quite, that's, I've that's, got low ambitions, then. Okay, fair enough, yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Um, yeah, if you'll be you... regretting that when in about three years time you can get one for like 200 quid off Facebook Marketplace and he's got millions in the bank and he's he's buying his nan of yeah, he's like, oh, you're, sorry dad you've had your one <laughs> I will I'm regretting it already okay uh, more of this rubbish in a minute Uh, and now, of course, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. You've been counting down the days uh, for so long, you've forgotten you were even waiting. Um, it's our sealed envelope of answers and dreams. Sort of predictions, wasn't it? So Pre- right back at the beginning of the season, I think it was in the... We did a little preview episode just before the first game of the season. Yeah. And we did our predictions for the coming season. And we had some categories... We wrote down the answers, what we thought of each category was, and we put them in a sealed envelope where they've been ever since. Yes, still now, sealed. What were the categories? Categories were league position, top scorer and how many, player of the season, that's our judgment, um, surprise package, highest attendance, the Argyle scores, home and away, most red cards, as in who would get them, and who got sold in January, okay? Yep. So shall I go through the actual answers first? Um, yeah, I okay. think so, yeah. So, as you know, listeners, we were fourth in the league before it got called off, but we actually finished fifth on points per game. Top scorer was Bowman with 15. Our player of the season, this is mine and Dan's, we agree it's Randall Williams. Uh, Our surprise package was a global pandemic called coronavirus. The highest attendance was Argyle at home, sold out. And the Argyle, it was only the home match that happened, that was 4-0 to Exeter City. Most red cards, it was shared across the board. Taylor, Parks, Atangana, and last week, Moxie. Yes, yeah, so we only got one. There's only no one got more than one red card, which is, you know, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's good, but four of them got one. One of them and was then, very, very <laughs> significant, though. So. Indeed, I can't remember the other three. Um, and then final category was anyone sold in January. So I'm, un- I'm opening the envelope. Right, yeah, pass me mine as well, yeah. Oh, Let's have our own. Each other's answers. Oh, well, pass each. Let's have yeah. each other's then, well, that's yeah. That's mine. Okay. And uh, this is yours. Okay, so what's the first one again? Hold on. Uh, oh, the first one is league position. So the actual answer is fifth. What did I say? You said second. Uh, you said sixth. That's a point oh. for you. Yeah, I'm closer, aren't I? Yeah, you are closer. Okay. You, that's, that's my optimism getting ahead of me. So you get one point. Um, next category, top scorer. The answer, real answer was Bowman. Who did you say? Who did I say? Oh, I no, who I did know. I say? You said... Nicky Jose. You said Nicky Jose. Really? Yeah. How many did I think he was going to get? 16. So did you. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, right, okay, wrong. The actual number was Bowman with 15, so wrong for both. Um, player of the season, you said, the actual answer was Randall Williams. You said Nicky Law. Ah, well, that might still be the case. You put Jake K- Taylor. Ah, but that might still be. No, I think he was slightly better this season than last season, but definitely wrong. Okay, so no, uh, no points there. Um, Surprise package. The real answer was global pandemic coronavirus. You said Jake Taylor. <laughs> what did I say? I think th- yeah, we were, I think we were going for players, weren't we, at the time, oh. weren't we? So who's going to be like a surprise kind of player? So I, that, that, Jake Taylor's not right. No. Who would it have been if it was someone, someone who's like kind who of like... Who surprised us. Who surprised us this season? Sort of no one. Well, I've been surprised at some awful bits, but, you know, I tell you, Sparks was a real revelation. All right, Jack Sparks, yeah. maybe, yeah. You've put... <laughs> Jonathan fought back and wins us against Argyle. <laughs> Jonathan fought comes back and beats us against Argyle. Wins That's for us against Argyle. Yeah. Well, that didn't happen either. That did not happen. Well, Jonathan fought. Um, okay. Uh, highest attendance. It, well, it was capacity. It was 8,500, I believe. Uh, you said 6,430. Right. What did you say? What did I you say? said 8,555. Hey! Is that a point for me? <laughs> no, you win that oh, one, right, yeah. Very good. Um, so that's one all. Um, 
Score against Argyle. Well, it's only the home one. Yep. You said 3-1 to City. Okay. What you did said 2-1 Oh, City. so you win. That's a point for you. Is this interesting, listeners? Or is this terribly boring? I can't tell. Well, the, presumably you've all played along at home and you've just <laughs> opened your sealed envelopes, which you've kept in perhaps the sock drawer, and you're, you know, laughing along with us. Let's hope so. Um, category number seven. Oh, no, most... I've heard people do this on the other podcast and I found it entertaining. Oh, so... okay. All right. We'll keep we're sticking with it. Um, it's a good game for radio, isn't it? Watching someone read something out. Um, most red cards, you said Tom Parks, which is true. He got equal most. Right. Okay. Yeah. You got Bowman and he oh. didn't get any, did he, this year? He didn't get any. So uh, you, that's a point for you. Well done. And then finally, sold in January. It might have been better off if he had a, had a couple of red cards. Maybe. Yeah. Um, you said that Archie Collins would get sold in January. Oh. What did I say? You put Randall Williams. Neither is true, because, of course, no one would have predicted this. Jordan Tilson got sold. Yes, he was the only one, wasn't he? Off to, uh, not Wraith Rovers, where did he go? Uh, oh, Leaf. Ross County. Ross County. Ro- uh, yeah, Ross County. Yeah. Very good. So you get three points, Dan. How many <laughs> okay, do I Okay, I think you only got two. Oh, uh, well, you win. You well, got then. the attendance and... Um, no, I think you just got that, actually. Oh, you got one. Dead. It's a whitewash. Um, well, congratulations to you. Thank you. Your prize is the envelope. Um, we'll do that again next year, listeners. Don't worry. We are going to do that again next year, whether you like or not, because I, en- I enjoyed it. Let's keep the envelope and then we can remember Yeah, okay. Categories. But maybe we could do some new categories. If you've got any ideas of some better categories than that, oh, yeah. then can you, uh, can you please just tell us? Um, so, obviously, we're going to take a summer break now. Uh, I've got a sunbed waiting for me in the garden because we can't go anywhere um no we can we live in devon mate we can go somewhere sunny different rules apply down here it's true we can go to budley salterton um we can go and hang out with lee martin and listen to some country music but no that's holmes i was holmes that likes the country music is it? yeah what does lee martin like i don't know acid house yeah, he looks like he might do. <laughs> um, well, we'll let them get on with that, and we're going to get on with our stuff. But we hope to be back at some point, don't we? Well, I suppose the same as with last season. We'll come back when there's a, something to talk about. Yeah, um, yeah. we're not it limited. Won't, it won't be for a while, I imagine. But we'll, there'll be bits of news, more news in a way than usual, won't there? Because we don't even know when the season's going to start yet. So they will have to decide that at some point. Yeah. Whether or not there's enough material there for us to bother doing... Yes, we'll see. And it's see. never stopped us before. We'll see. We'll see how you get on with your you seagulls know. on your roof. I don't know. If, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anything like that. But, you know, if if there is something to talk about... Don't worry. Well, we can talk about it. i set my Siri off somehow. Siri's already started talking um, about it. We'll be here. Um, so, the only thing that we can wonder about, I suppose, is whether the football will return with or without crowds. That's the big kind of big question, isn't it? Um, yeah. And there's talk in Spain, which of course has also had real problems with this pandemic, although they're a bit more through the woods than we are, I think. Um, there's talk in Spain of spaced out crowds. Now, obviously, it's easier in an all seater stadium um, because you can literally allocate seats. Yeah, that's count true. The yeah. Seat numbers. Obviously, city's not all seater, but it is two side seats. I wonder if they might start thinking about letting a thousand people in. Might be better than nothing. Well, it's a thousand pounds worth of money. Yeah. And, you know, if the games have got to happen, I think that would be. Absolutely. Let's hope it can happen. Um, and, and of then, course, uh, you, you wouldn't yeah. have any away fans. So maybe you, could get, maybe you could do more than that. I don't know. Maybe. I'm no expert. Yeah. I mean, it was so weird without any people there. It's going to be. It's all going to be strange, isn't it? What's happening. And, yeah, like, it's not. We're, it's not over yet, even though football's come back and. You can now go in shops and stuff like it's um, we're not through the woods. No, and this is a weird anomaly for Exeter City and the other playoff teams, isn't it? Because, of course, every other League Two and League One team, whether promoted or relegated or nothing, they're just sat still. Now, I know some of them are signing players. Yeah. Um, and I get why Argyle would, given that they've been promoted and they'll have some guarantee of cash. But um, it's really we just had this weird week back in where stuff's happening and now we'll be the same as everyone else, where nothing's happening. Yeah. So, so we, in a sense, we've had a, a gift of a week. Whether it was much of a gift or not, I don't know. I've, when Moxie demolished that bloke, I, I well, was... it's nice to have a bit of. Uh, I mean, whatever. Ultimately, it's we're used oh, to it, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely, of course. But it was I'm nice. Joking. It was nice to have a little bit of excitement back in, and and a bit of a reason to kind of get like. Because it's great having football there, isn't it? But and I, I've always been a kind of fan of the Premier League from a neutral 
point. I've always watched that kind of stuff. So it's that is great, and but it's not the same as like supporting a team. That kind of like it gives you a kind of a bit of a focus, doesn't it? Like when yeah, and being able to go and see it and feel it and all that stuff. So yeah. I hope that before too long we'll be back in it. Um, but until then, listeners, you can get in touch with us in all the normal ways. Um, the more banal, the better in the off season, of course. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Big Bank Pod, on Gmail, uh, on email we're um, Big Bank Pod at Gmail dot com, and you can find us on Facebook, the Big Bank Theory Podcast. We were getting quite a lot of grief from Argyle fans for uh, complaining about Ryan Lowe being on the sofa, but I stand by it. Well, if you will bait the bear, then yeah, I'd do it again. Yeah, keep doing it. You know, you can't do it. I was get, I got quite a few. Um, of the opposite. I was getting sort of Argyle fans sort of praise in a way because I <laughs> I speculated that who that maybe this week it would be following the first week of Ryan Lowe being on the telly I speculated that it might we might have had Luke McCormick on the couch for the next one but and that's sort of like I think maybe Argyle fans thought that was like I was an Argyle fan kind of making that joke but you know I don't know whatever <laughs> um, I mean that kind of humour goes way above their heads down there yeah you could say that or you could say it's all inclusive it breaks down barriers <laughs> like, like, nice but Whatever. Well, anyway, you can follow if you want that kind of high level, sharp edge humour. Follow us on Twitter. Yeah. If you don't, well, good luck with your life. Um, my name's John. I've been here with my friend and colleague Dan. Yeah. Cheers, Spice. Cheers, mate. We'll see you on the other side. See you later. <laughs>